Names are going to be well-known names in this D.C. area. We're trying to run a pick and roll. We see Tyrone Johnson out of Montrose Christian. Young man played very well in the National uh, High School Invitational, uh, Janae. Exactly. I had an opportunity to watch him play against Oak Hill Academy, and he was particularly impressive, although all uh, attention was focused on Quinn Cook out of Oak Hill. This guy, young guy, held his own, and he was extremely impressive. And there you see some highlights from last year's game. A guy named Quinn Cook uh, from right here in Bowie went to Oak Academy, and now he's at Duke University. And I'm joined by Coach Eddie Simpson from the Academy of the Holy Cross and Coach Rob Gardner from Wise High School. And Rob played in the Capital Classic All-Star Game. We're going to talk about the rosters now of this year's game and some of the top players who will be playing in these games. And Coach, I want to start with you. Yeah, you have some good players. You're going to be coaching for and against. Um, yeah, I have a good Great roster of players that's going to be on my team. I have uh, Katie uh, McCormick, who's going to be attending Georgetown University next year, plays uh, high school at St. Mary's Riken. Uh, Faith Evans, who was I'm not even I didn't even get a chance to see the All Mets selection, whether she won All Player of the Year or I know she was in the running for it, um, but she played at Good Council um, and she'll be attending uh, UVA next year. Um, Pretty much just a, a stack squad of great individual players um, and hopefully we can put, put it together and play well as a team. Um, the other team has some good players as Jiffany Brown uh, who's out of HD Woodson who uh, led them to the city title this year against Good Council uh, as well as uh, a couple of our other teammates, uh, Rhonda Bell um, and then some other players, uh, Ashley Jeffries out of Calvin Coolidge. And I think they even picked up a kid from uh, Mead, uh, Iman Bailey, who is a very special kid. I had an opportunity to coach against her a couple years ago in a Christmas tournament. Um, so some great talent going to be in that game at 2 o'clock. Um, and the game before is going to have some great talent as well with the uh, Maryland Suburb against the Virginia Suburb uh, game. So I'm looking forward to uh, both of those games. and. You know, hoping that we can uh, live up to the expectation of what the Capital Classic is all about. Now, Rob, you're also coaching, and you, you're coaching a, a suburban team against a district team, and you have one of your guys on the team. Let's talk about him before we get into the roster. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm very excited, you know, just, number one, for the opportunity to be able to coach in this game. Um, five years coming in as a head coach and having the opportunity to be selected to coach in this game is, you know, it's a great accomplishment. I'm, I'm very uh, humbled by that. Uh, and then second, having to be able to coach one of my own kids in there um, just means a lot, you know, and um, having coach Keith Shivers in my first year at Wise and his last year um, at Wise has just been um, incredible. He's a great kid and I'm looking forward to, again, extending my uh, coaching hand with him. And this will be our last um, opportunity and time together as player coach. Now, when you get on the the floor. And this question is for both of you guys. You're going to have a lot of egos because everyone who's playing in this game is good. Um, how are you going to manage that, especially the first day when none of them have played with each other and uh, it's going to be kind of like a ragtag bunch just getting put together there? Well, I think with uh, with that being said, you know, a lot of these kids have played in already in an all-star game, so they've been in this situation before. This all-star game is later than a, a lot of the other ones, so a lot of them will be able to put their egos to the side and try to play and showcase what they can do, but within an, doing it within a system. Um, I think, you know, all these kids respect each other. They've a lot of them have played against each other. You know, I have two of my kids that's going to also be on my roster, that uh, is also going to be very special. Uh, having them and having an the opportunity to get them on the floor and play and showcase them what they're capable of doing before they go off to college and play in their D1 schools as uh, prospective basketball players there. Uh, where are they going to be going to school? Uh, one of them will be going to uh, Sacred Heart, that's uh, LeRae at the end, mm -hmm. and Pandora Wilson will be going to Drexel. Okay, so Division One uh, girls going to play. Yeah. And uh, what about you, how are you going to manage the team? Well, you know, um, again, you know, a lot of these guys uh, play AAU and, and high-level travel teams, and, you know, they know how the makeup of those teams are and playing with other kids that match their abilities. And I, I think um, it's, it's just important to be able to camaraderie, you know, having them get to know each other quickly and, 
you know, put a lot of emphasis in the part of, you know, this should be a fun event, you know, you know, um, treasure this moment, you know, but um, like John Calipari said, those that share normally have the most success, you know, and so if you buy into that very quickly, uh, you know, um, a little bit of structure, a little bit of discipline, uh, not over coach, but not under coach, um, and just buy into the philosophy of, you know, hey, the extra pass is always the best pass, and, you know, um, then they'll do fine. They'll be fine. Another good question for both of you, and, you know, coaching an all-star game, everybody wants to play. Is it always on your mind, I want to get everybody equal minutes? Is that how you approach the game? Everyone's going to play X amount of minutes? Um, you know, I, I think so. I mean, you know, it's an all-star game. You know, um, I, I don't know how much the emphasis are on, is on winning, you know. Um, I think, again, you know, having the kids have an opportunity to go out there and showcase their abilities and um, one of the last opportunities they have as a high school student athlete to be able to do it on a high level. And then it comes down to about competition at some point. And, um, you know, for us, we want to win. You know, the suburban team want to win when it comes down to it. And I think at some point in the game, um, you're going to have to cipher what five can play the best and can finish out the game. And, you know, hopefully, you know, you keep the game close and competitive and, you know, uh, make it a good game for those folks that come to the game to watch. Go yeah. I feel the same way. I think that you, uh, you play, try to get these kids uh, five minutes at a time. Hopefully it's not messing up a run, but or see where, where you can fit in a next group. Um, and that the rosters are basically down to 10 to 11 players on the team, you know, where you can kind of like just keep keep moving it around a little bit. Um, and then you do. You find out your best five that's going to help you win the game because down the end all coaches and all players are competitive and they want to win. So by putting the best five on the floor at the end of the game is what you're going to be looking at to see who can work together. It won't, might not be the best five, but who can work best together. Now the game is on April 21st. Um, how many practices are you guys going to get in with your team? Uh, me personally, I'm uh, just going to have three in. Mine start next week. Monday, uh, it'll be Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. And the game is Saturday. Um, we're just going to try to get in as much as possible. Like I said, I'm not going to try to go out there and overcoach them and throw a whole bunch of plays or anything in. Uh, you want to throw a few inbound plays and just a few different sets and let these kids create off their own ability. No, you got you coaching. I mean, the, the practice at T.C. Williams on that court, or is it at the Holy Cross? Uh, my practice will be at, actually at Holy Cross. Okay. Yeah. And coach? Yep. Same. Uh, we're going to practice three times next week: uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And um, same as coach. You know, we'll, we'll you know we'll keep it simple. You know, something they can um, mesh and gel together very quickly. You know, try to put some uh, competitive edge on there defensively. You know, get them to compete with one another and get at it. You know, we just don't have too many opportunities when you get uh, the caliber of play all in one gym like okay. that. So you need to take advantage of it. And will you be at Wise? With the and we will be at Wise. So everyone's going to come to Wise and. Yes. My question also, you said it earlier, you want to win, Suburban wants to win. How big is that rival? And you guys could both speak to it. Um, <laughs> inner city DC schools against the suburbs. Well, uh, on our end, on the boys, um, it's always been a rival. Uh, as far as I can remember, you know, um, th the city kids and the suburban kids, and um, there's always been some bragging rights there, you know. And so uh, knowing that, um, you know, there'll be some private school kids playing on a district team, and, and so, and, and basically all the kids know each other. I mean, you know, they're on a circuit with one another, and. Um, it just gives us an opportunity again, you know, to be in a game that's high caliber and at the end of the day, um, like Coach said, we want to win the game. So, you know, we want to put all our effort into doing that and have fun at the same time. Yeah, I think it's the same thing. You just go out, uh, you, you go to compete. You put them out there and let them just go. Um, that's it. Let him go. Let yeah. him go play. Yeah. Uh, we, we touched on it also. Uh, you said this is one of the later All-Star games uh, being played for the high school uh, kids. There is an NCAA rule they can only play in two. Can you speak to that and why that rule was put into place? I'm not sure why the rule was put in place, but um, I just think they did it uh, basically so that uh, the All-American teams wouldn't be having these. I, I think the reason why 
is so the All-Americans weren't playing on multiple teams and being pulled out of school to travel across the country so much, missing so many days of school. That's what I remember reading at one point in time is the reason why it was put in. It sounds like a good rule for me if it's meaning keeping kids in the school. You think you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Just two games and that's good. And yeah. Now, if a kid plays in three, he's ineligible. Am I correct? That's correct. Just for the first semester, for the whole year? I think it's a whole year. A whole year. Just yeah. for, So you really got to be on your P's and Q's, especially as high school coaches, if, if one of your kids says, hey, uh, I'm going to play an X All-Star game and I'm going to play a Capital Classic and then McDonald's called. Well, you only can pick two. You can't play in three. That's right. That's right. You got to be on, on top of it, you know. My kids, I've had a couple of these kids that are actually on this team here that were selected in multiple uh, ones. And actually, when I found out that I was coaching, you know, I made some phone calls and emailed some coaches and everything, and they were about to play in a couple of games. And I told them, I said, well, you can only play in uh, two games. You know, if this is going to be your second game, you need to make a decision whether or not you're going to play in that game or decide you want to play and which is more prestigious, the Capital Classics. That's good, and we we'll know the rules so yeah. the kid doesn't suffer in the long run because exactly. they think they're getting exposure. And, and that's one th other thing I wanted to get to. As we go down these rosters, and a lot of the big-name guys know where they're going, but there are still guys playing in this game. I, I know your guys undecided, a lot of undecided um, players. Is it another sh one more showcase to show colleges across the country, hey, I can play? Are there going to be a lot of college scouts, you think, at this game? Yeah, um, well, uh, because of the rule, uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, all coaches can be there except Division One college coaches. If I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure. If, I, I want to say it's open now. The open rule has just opened uh, as of April 5th or something mm -hmm. like that, where all college coaches can be okay. out. So um, I know there's some big events going on. Uh, I'm hoping that, you know, we can get some of these college coaches out to see some of these kids that are undecided. But I know there's a lot of sophomores, juniors, and everyone else that's playing in some big events, AAU events, mm -hmm. other places. So I know a lot of college coaches are planning on being there as well. Yeah. And, you know, I, I just know even with, uh, with Keith Shivers, you know, there are a lot of schools that are interested that's going to be coming um, just to be able to, you know, to see him in this um, in this All-Star game, so uh, I do believe it's it's another opportunity for kids that's going to that's undecided to have another opportunity to be able to show. And, and and what else? I mean, would you ask for? I mean, you know, if a level to play to be able to show that you can play at a high level in such a prestigious All-Star game like the Capital Classic. Well, I want to thank both of you for being here today. I want to wish you both luck coaching in this game and, and have a good time with it and uh, enjoy it. And uh, hopefully we'll be out there and uh, see what's going on at the Capitol Classic. And that game is going to be held on April 21st at T.C. Williams over in Virginia, the Capitol Classic. And if you want to get out there, the University of Maryland is going to have four guys on showcase in the national game. I'm your host, Chris Marks. Thanks for joining me here today, and we'll see you next time here on Inside Sports.